Let's get out of here. Oh, it's been so hot. It's probably, it's like 90, 100 degrees out here. Y'all seen my new truck? First blue truck I've had. All right, let's get to the camp. See what I got in there. The camera quit taking pictures. Uh, hopefully the pigs just laid down. Uh, if there's no movement, the, it's not taking pictures, so. They definitely were in there. The door was down. I could see that on the camera. We're about to pull up on the trap, so about to find out. Y'all stay tuned.
<laughs> All right, we got seven pigs. Seven perfect size pigs to eat. We'll try to get them cleaned at the camp by myself. It's a lot of cleaning. Uh, we'll have to get it done quick because it's going to get real hot. Okay, now the work starts. We gotta hurry up and get them back to the camp. It's been getting so hot. We gotta clean them while it's cool. that camera on the back tree maybe we got some footage of the pigs hitting the trigger with that camera let's go get it I think there's two or three males and the rest of females. A lot of meat. Let's go start cleaning. All right, that's a lot of meat by myself at the camp. That's a lot of pigs to clean in the short time I have. Uh, I did call one of the neighbors up here. He's going to come pick up some pigs. So none of these pigs will go to waste. Those will be delicious pigs, trust me. All right, Freddie Lee's gonna take some off my hands. 
He's a local around here. He sees a lot of pigs. The pigs are out of control over yeah. there, huh? Oh, yeah. Definitely out of control. He lives down the road. They're just everywhere. I mean, we can't keep up. I think we're up to eight or nine traps, and we just, we're not even putting a dent in them right now. It's crazy. All right, we got them cleaned up. Three ice chests, guys. There's another ice chest. I'm going straight to the station, get some ice. There's another ice chest. All right, another successful trip. Got rid of some pigs, got a bunch of meat. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank y'all. All right, we're back at the house. We're gonna do a little processing. A lot of the pigs, I cut the back strap out. So we're gonna vacuum seal some of the back strap. Uh, we're gonna chunk a lot of the meat out. We decided we're gonna do some tasso, so. Okay, here's some front shoulders. Front shoulder. Here's a high leg roast right here. This is all back strap from those young pigs. There's some deep bone hind legs. And still have all this meat. Okay, we're gonna smoke about 15 pounds of this wild pork. I deboned a lot of the hind legs. Took now I'm gonna just cut it in smaller pieces. I want all the pieces to kind of be even to where everything smokes about the same amount of time. I don't want some real thick, some too thin. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them all pretty close to the same size, same thickness. It won't be perfect, but it's gonna work. about what we're looking for. Pretty good piece right there. See, that would be too thick. So we're gonna just kind of fillet that in half. Now we have a much thinner piece. Okay, we got the 15 pounds cut up, uh, nice little chunks. We're gonna go ahead and season this all up with K-Fred. I'll probably use almost half this can. We'll see, I'm gonna go by sight. That's how these Cajuns cook over here. We don't measure hardly nothing. I can tell by sight how seasoned something's gonna be. Uh, since I started the YouTube channel, I am trying to start measuring stuff a little bit more, but. I can go by sight and I know what it's gonna taste like, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the seasoning on and I'll show you how much curing salt we'll put in here too. Okay, first I'm gonna dump it in this bigger container. 
All right, let's start putting the cape red on it. I think I'm gonna put my gloves on for this. Y'all hang on. All right, that's about half a can. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add the curing salt. Uh, the curing salt, one ounce per every 25 pounds of meat. Uh, we have close to 15 pounds. I'm gonna do a little bit less than an ounce. Um, we're gonna mix that in with the seasoning. We're gonna move it around, let that curing salt really incorporate in the meat. Uh, we're gonna put it in the ice box. Tomorrow we'll take it out and we'll smoke it. All right, let's go ahead and put the curing salt in. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just so I can get that curing salt all around all pieces. That might have been maybe a cup right there. That way that curing salt's gonna really get on every piece of meat. You can smell this, that cape red on that pork smells good. This is the bags that I would use my okra for. Uh, it's bigger than an ice bag, it has a bigger opening. Now they're good for a lot of different things. I love it to use it for my meat processing. Like I said, we'll put it in the ice box. Yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna come out. We're gonna string it up. Got some cooking string. And we'll just tie the pieces every three or four inches. And we're gonna hang it in the smoker. All right, there we go. Okay, we're back. We took the meat that was in the ice box, let it sit overnight with the curing salt. I did take it out a couple times, moved it around, got that curing salt to really work in the meat. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tie these up. I'm using some of this cooking string. All right, so we got some five foot string. We'll just start tying them. Uh, something just like this. We'll come up here, tie another one. Okay, something like this. Just keep going. I've explained this the reason I like to tie it on the string I used to do it on the expanded metal and I, I just don't like all the grill marks when you take it off the grill it has you know it's not smoked and has the pretty color so with the string it's one line and you can move it a little bit and it'll be smoked and that pretty color all around the meat so we'll just keep tying them we'll bring them out and we'll load the smoker up here in a second These are with Cape Red and Cured Salt. Alright, let's go load it up. Okay, here's the smoker. 
this is one that I built at the shop. I designed it, uh, had a guy, some people help me weld it. I did a little bit of the welding, uh, but it's a four by four box. It's made out of quarter inch steel. I have a fire box. Let me go ahead and show y'all. Okay, we're gonna hang the meat from up here. If you notice, this comes out, we welded some angle iron to the side. All of these, you can just sit the bar and all these. This is like some one by quarter angle iron. And we welded with the V on the bottom. And the rods should just sit in these. So look at the different levels. We can do a number of different things. Uh, if we smoke in a pig, we have the expanded metal tray. We don't have a ton of meat, so I don't need all the room. So I'm going to kind of space it out. So I use the second and the third notch from the back, and we'll hang the meat over these two. And I think I'll put the other two bars up in the front right here. Okay, so we got it loaded up with the 15 pounds of wild pork. This is the pigs we just trapped. And it only takes a little bit of the smoker. I'm only using four of the bars. Uh, we could smoke 100 pounds in here at a time. Uh, today, it's only 15 pounds, so I have it really spread out. Let's go ahead and light it. Okay, today we're going to be using some china ball wood. Uh, china balls, they call it a chicken tree. It grows on the fence lines. Uh, they just pop up everywhere. They're real good for smoking. Turns your meat a good pretty red ruby color. Uh, also, I use pecan, hickory, apple. they all good. But today we're going to use this china ball wood. That should be plenty. Okay, so everything looks good. Got the fire going, got a pretty blue flame. Got the meat spread out evenly. We're gonna go ahead and shut the door. We're gonna try to get this, keep it around 150 and 175 is a good smoking temperature. We'll go an hour or so, check it, but this cook might take five or six hours, maybe longer. Y'all stay tuned. Okay, we're gonna try to get the temperature between 150 and 175. That's a good smoking temperature. Once I get it right on, I can tell by the flame about how hot it's gonna get. Once you've done it enough, you know how to set the flame. If you put it too hot, naturally it's gonna get hot. I can get this smoker about 300 degrees, but you gotta crank the fire up pretty hot. 
Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. Looks like the temperature is holding at 150. We're going to watch it close. Uh, we're starting to get some good smoke too. Okay, it's only been an hour, but let's go ahead and check it out. Looking good. Okay, I adjusted the fire just a little bit. I turned it, I cracked it up just a little bit higher. And we got it back to 150 pretty quick. I mean, that's perfect. You want it in the middle of the gray, so I mean, you couldn't get better than that. But we'll just watch it close, make sure I didn't crank it too much because it could start gradually climbing. I mean, as long as it doesn't get, you know, higher than 180, we smoking. We're not really cooking it. So I like to see it in the middle of that gray mark. Okay, we're about two hours and 40 minutes in. Let's see what it looks like. Temperature did climb up. Uh, we still in the gray. That's all I'm worried about. Starting to get a little color to it. Wait a couple more hours. Okay, we four hours and 15 minutes in. Let's take a peek. Man, it's looking good now. All right, it's really looking good. We probably only have another hour left. What I will do is separate the string from the meat where it's sticking. And what that's going to do is let it brown all around. There may not be that line on it. So I'm just going to separate it. Uh, and it's really not that bad. Like right here. I just turn it. That way you won't even have a string mark. It's going to be pretty all around the tasso. Pull a little piece off. That's going to be so good. That's wild pork. I just took a little piece of the end. I know it's cooked. Man, good flavor. That is going to be some good stuff. All right, let's give it another hour. And I'm sure it's going to be done. What a flavor. No wild game taste. You know, all these wild pigs are taking over. We can do something good with them. Give it another hour. You'll be ready. Okay, for the last 30, 40 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and baste them. This is a Cajun Blast basting sauce. That garlic butter. It's going to help give that tasso a nice, pretty shine to it. Let's go ahead and spray that on there. Okay, it's been five hours. I think they're done. Let's check it out.
color on that. Tasso smoked pork. Okay, we're gonna bring it in. We'll let it cool down. Uh, we'll vacuum seal maybe two or three pieces in each little bag. Came out great, Joe. Let's go do that. So good. I can't stop eating it. It's so good. The trick is not to cut the pieces too thick. Five hours was perfect. The temperature stayed between 150. At the end, it started climbing to like 175, which is fine. In fact, when you want to get the pretty color, sometimes you got to raise the heat up at the end. It's going to be so good in beans and okra and corn. Uh, we're going to put it in gumbos. Uh, Cajuns around here, we put tasso and everything. You can just do a tasso sandwich. It would be good. Right. 